All right, guys, let's check out the Bulova parking meter. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a parking meter overlay in the dial. This is kind of a heritage model from Bulova, and I have to say big thanks to Mimo from Mimo's Jewelry for sending this over. I'll put a link in the description to his website. Definitely check it out. Make sure he knows I sent you. Let's get into it. So we're looking at a 43 millimeter wide case here. And then the lug to lug is actually shorter. You can see it's inset on the case here, uh, 42.7 drilled lugs. So they're kind of inset, you can kind of see it there. So it makes it wear and look interesting, that's for sure. At the thinnest point here, center, that's where I measure all the other watches, right? So 11.8 millimeter thick, sapphire crystal with AR coating, and you have a 22 millimeter lug width. You could put different straps on this, but I don't know why you would, because this strap that they included with it is very nice. I really like the way it's padded off to the sides. Um, just haven't really handled a leather strap done stitched up like this, and it's just kind of fun. It's very comfortable. So this is actually called the, quote, parking meter watch, and it is labeled on the case back as well. I'll show you that. It is a limited edition. There's only 5,000 of them. I know it's a large quantity limited edition, but it's gonna be this run and then that's it, it's done. This is number 1,428. It has a retail price of $595. So you're gonna probably get them for you know just over $500 essentially. I think that's a pretty good deal. That's a sweet spot right now with everything that's going on. You know, We can't spend a whole lot of money on watches or we try to not spend a whole lot of money on watches anyway, I do. Um, well, whatever. Uh, the model number on this one is a 98B390. And let's take a look at the dial a little bit closer. There we go. Now you can see you kind of have a brushed finish on the dial. Can you see that? Can I get the right angle? Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. And then that parking meter overlay is actually set on top of the dial and it separates the lower 60 minute counter you can see I have the chronograph hand running. And then you have a 24 hour clock up top showing you that you're in the AM or PM. Of course, the hour minute, the orange chronograph hand, the date over here at three o'clock, the inner ring is a tachometer. And then this crown on the bottom, there's a rotating inner ring with a 12 hour counter in there. So if you wanna track another time zone or something, or you just wanna time something, I'm sure you could figure out how to time an additional thing. It's already a chronograph. I don't know what else you'd be timing. And then you have a bullhead design. You have your pushers here. So this is your start stop. This will be your reset. So if we stop it and then, well, let's, let's start it again. Let's get it rotated over here so you can kind of see the full sweep of it because it will be a sweep reset. It's not like a mechanical quartz. It is a quartz, by the way, because you didn't know that. So there you go. There's the reset. It snaps back or sweeps back, excuse me. Uh, the movement inside is a quartz Miota OS21, if you want to look that movement up. Should have about a five-year battery life on there, and it would be accuracy plus minus 20 seconds per month. Probably going to be a little more accurate than that. You can see the overall case shape here and fully brushed. You have this overlay here on top that's anodized blue. Very nicely done. Ties in with everything. You can kind of see how it's done there. And then here's a look at the case back. They actually put parking meter in parentheses. That's pretty fun. And of course they are numbered, proper way to do a limited edition. And you can see it's the 50th anniversary, 1973 to 2023. Very cool, very close to my birth year, a couple years off. So if you're looking for a birth year watch and maybe you were born in 1973, you don't have to settle for picking up a 1973 watch, get a reissue of a 1973 watch. That way you have new modern components and it's still kind of a fun birth year watch. Just a thought, just an idea. All right, let's pop this on wrist so you can see what that looks like. And then we will try to do a loom shot. Is there a loom? I don't know if there's loom on this or not. But you can see how weird it wears because of the case shape and then where the lugs and the strap meet up here. Uh, it makes it like pop up off your wrist a little bit. So even though it's only 11.8 millimeter thick, it actually kind of looks and wears a little bit thicker. It's not top heavy because it's not a very heavy watch to begin with. And then, you know, you have plenty of uh, adjustment here on the leather strap. So just wear it a little bit more comfortable, but snug 
and it'll balance out really nice. It's not top heavy though at all. So you could wear it loose and it still wouldn't float around that much. Is there a loom on this? I don't think there is. So uh, we're not going to do a loom shot. I think that's all just painted on. I don't think there's any loom on this. I mean, I'll show you, but I didn't see any feedback on the UV light. So yeah, basically zero loom. There's a little bit on the hour and minute that orange glows a little bit, but no loom. So anyway, guys, there it is. Just a fun borderline wild card, but kind of serious collectible as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.